Hello guys and girls, this is Pili Diatas for Alice Power Leather Crafts and in today's video I have a shop assistant, Lucy, she's gonna help me today, I think. <laughs> in today's video we're gonna make the T1 Plus tool bag. It's a little bigger of a project than what we have done in the past videos, but yeah, let's just jump into it. Right, the first step is of course printing the pattern and combining all the pages. If you want a detailed tutorial on that, there will be a video somewhere here, a pop-up or something like that. After that, of course we need to cut out all the pieces. I've already done that. Here I have all of the pieces cut out in the various kinds of leathers. Everything except this shape here, which is like the top loop for the bag. I make it out of the 2mm thick leather. Uh, this for the top loop is 5mm thick veg down leather. It just has like more of a structure that I like for the top loop, but yeah, you can do whatever you like. I think it won't make too much of a difference. All right, after cutting out the pieces, the next step is to mark all of the holes. Now, if you take a look at this pattern piece here or also at this one, we have all of these stitching lines. Some of them, here in the center and here, are for internal pockets or here for the bit holder. And the big black marks like here, 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 here in the corners, are places where I reinforce the stitches with the uh, rivets. This is not mandatory, but it just makes for a more uh, rugged product. Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead now and start with marking all of the holes on all of the pieces. And yeah, I'm gonna check in later with you. I took detail about how I mark the points for the stitching here around the edge on these specific bags because it is gonna be stitched inside out and I'm going to use this hole punch which makes round holes. I prefer to actually punch the holes from the flesh side of the leather because when you punch them from the outside at least on these pieces of leather that I have now the inside leaves a bit of a fuzziness around the hole and the hole is not perfectly visible. But when you punch from the flesh side to the outside, uh, the hole just tends to be a little bit clearer and it helps when stitching the product inside out. And it doesn't really matter how the hole looks after the fact because the stitch will be on the inside of the bag so it's not gonna be visible. That's why now I just flip this piece of leather around and I'm gonna mark these stitch lines from the flesh side of the leather. All right, now as you can see, on this piece of leather and on other pieces of leather, I have already marked with dots where all the stitch lines are gonna be. So what I'm gonna have to do now is connect the dots, <laughs> pun intended, uh, with a ruler and the scratch well, so I then know where to punch the holes. Of course the other option is, like in my pattern tutorial video, is to glue the paper pattern onto the leather and just follow exactly these patterns, the dots on the pattern. But I usually prefer to just mark them with a ruler and then use this multi-hole punch and punch them out faster that way. Alright, as you see in the video, I'm using the ruler and my scratch owl to mark all the more internal stitch lines. For the stitch lines here along the edge, I just marked the start point and the finish point through the pattern. And then I'm just going to use this wing divider here to mark smoothly along the edge. Thank you. 
Okay, I've done the big pieces. Now it's time for all these little pieces for internal pockets ATC. I'm just gonna use the wing divider to mark the outside of the pockets for the stitching, except on this big one, I also have a center stitch that I have to mark according to the pattern. And on this one, which is the internal pocket of the forward bag, there is a mark on the pattern where it says roll top there. You want to mark the back side of the leather, skype it down so it's ni nice and thin. So you can then roll this top over and glue it in place so that you have a nicer edge on the top of the pocket. Now what I will also do on all these small pieces is to bevel the edges now before I install them on the bigger bags or before I even punch the holes. I've just marked all the stitching lines, as you can see all the edge around. And I have skived the inside of this uh, inside pocket. So I'm just gonna bevel the edges so that the, they have a nicer finish when we then assemble them. Right, as you saw, I bevelled all the edges and also on the big bags, the top and the bottom edge. Not the sides because I said they're gonna be on the inside of the bag, so it really doesn't matter. The next step is to start punching all the holes. I personally usually start with the big holes for the rivets and then I do the stitching holes. And you know, just take all the pieces one by one, wherever you mark stitching lines and holes for rivets and just start punching. It's a lot, takes a while, but yeah, that's what we have to do. Right, let me quickly explain what I did here for this part, for the bit holder. You might have noticed that the stitch lines on this pattern piece here, down here, are narrower than this piece. This is by purpose. So that when this piece, when the bit holder lies on this uh, top loop here, that it's not just flat, that it bows a little bit so that you have space for the pockets. Now, what I feel is easier, instead of punching all the holes and stitching them, is to punch the center holes here on the bit holder and the bottom and sides, punch the same holes into this piece, and then after you've stitched these two pieces together, to then punch the extra separations here, so you turn these two segments into four segments.
Okay, so we have all the holes punched in all of the various pieces, small and big. And the next step I want to do is to slick the edges of the smaller pieces. I have already beveled them, I just want to slick them now, so I can then start the assembly process. The first step of the assembly process is to stitch on the bit holder I talked about earlier to the top loop here. So we can then punch the final holes, stitch it together and then yeah, we're gonna see. We're gonna continue this, the assembly process. Alright, as you can see, I stitched down the middle and along the sides for the bit holder and I'm just gonna punch the in-between holes so that these two sections get separated into four sections so, can it, so that they can actually hold bits. Also, I didn't just punch blindly. I lined the new holes up with the existing hole and to be exact on the one, two, third hole from the center on both sides so it's nice and symmetrical. And now just take some thread and needles and stitch those two sections as well. And after we've stitched all the little pockets on the inside, the next step is to stitch this big roll here. We have these two long stitch lines on both bags. These are for the front of the bag. And we need to make like this loop here and stitch it together so that we can then feed a wire through here or a piece of metal or something which is gonna help keep the bag open and keep its shape so it's easier to access our tools or to drop our tools in and so on. Of course on the front bag, on the smaller of the two, we have the two stitch lines for the front but we also have these two stitch lines for the back of the bag. Here we're gonna do just the same thing. We're gonna roll it over like that and yeah, we're gonna see later how we are attaching this smaller bag to the bigger bag. Alright, all of our internal and external pockets have been stitched on on both bags. And now, as I said, the next step is to stitch the roll here at the top. We're gonna roll it this way so that the flesh side comes to the outside or to the front of the bag. And yeah, simply as that, just put it in your pony or fix it somehow and start stitching. <laughs>
All right, the small bog is ready. Front and back are looped over and stitched together. And for the big bag, we have the front here looped around. Now, we also have all the inside pockets installed. You might have noticed here on the double pocket, on the big bag, here are some marks from the pattern. These are holes for rivets for a tool strap to install. I don't include this tool strap because it depends what you want to do with it, what tool you want to put in there, on how long it needs to be. So just cut a strap you need, think of what you want to put in there and mount it with either two or with four rivets, you know, again, depending on what you want to do specifically for this spot here in the bag. Okay, we have our strap installed and we're getting there guys. It's time to stitch this flat thing into a bag shaped thing. As I said before, for this bag we're gonna do it inside out. So we're gonna have like the pockets on the outside, the, the flesh side, the hairy side of the leather on the outside. Just fold it in half and stitch along the edges here where we have already punched the holes here. And after we're done stitching, we can just turn it inside out or right side out <laughs> so that it is uh, correct. Okay, now we have both of our bags finished inside out. And before we turn the bags inside out, I want to reinforce the stitch here right at the corner on both sides uh, with one of my rivets. This will just make the stitch line so much stronger. Okay, the corners are reinforced. Now it's time to turn that thing inside out. This can actually be quite tricky slash annoying. And you might need to use quite some force to do that, depending on your leather. But yeah, just basically try to push it inside out or pull the corners, push the corners in from the outside and pull them in from the inside. But yeah, this part can be quite annoying. But don't be afraid, I mean, it's leather. We stitched everything pretty strongly, so you're not gonna damage anything by doing that. I'm almost. This is the big bug. This one is a little bit easier. The small one can be quite a bit trickier. And then just Push your fist in, push the corners into the corners until it's all inside out. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Or here are the corners. Yeah, we have our first bag right side out. Let's just do the second one. This will be a pain. This leather is slightly thicker, the specific piece, the bag is smaller. So this one can be pretty. All right, and we have our second bag turned inside out. So the big bag and the smaller one, which sits in front of the big bag. I guess you saw, this was quite a pain in the to to turn inside out. <laughs> okay guys, we have now one more round of stitching to do and we are done. What we need to do is to stitch the top loop onto the flap here on the big bag. 
just like this, front and back, making a three layer sandwich, um, stitching it together and after we stitch it together we have these tabs here that come from the front and we're just gonna touch them together with the rivets we used to combine the three pieces of leather and these, the four, on the back. You're gonna see it when I do it. So yeah, let's just start stitching these pieces together and then we're almost done. Don't forget at this point guys to also install this leftover flap here onto the rivet. Okay, we have our top loop installed with rivets and everything and stitched together. Now one more step, which is optional, but I would probably recommend it, is to install a piece of wire into the rim of both bags and onto the back of the smaller bag. This way you can shape the opening of the bag and it just keeps the bag nice and open so you can easily drop things in or retrieve things from the bag. So I've cut out a 40 centimeter piece of wire and I'm just gonna loop the ends over onto itself to have it doubled at the edges and to avoid the pointy tips. Check the size. Yeah, that's pretty good. And I'm just gonna uh, push the wire from the side or from the back rather into the loop that we sawed into the bag. And just like this, we have our wire installed, which gives us this possibility to shape the opening of the bag however we like. And we're gonna just do the same on the opening of this bag and here on the bag. Okay, with both bags now with our fixed opening or our wire supported opening. Now, how do we attach the small bag to the big bag? The way I do it is using Chicago screws, which is, which is like a screw, but it's like a post that is threaded internally and you have this little screw cap that screws on from the other side. This system allows the owner to, to remove the second bag if he doesn't want to use it and just use the big bag or also to add and remove the hammer loop which is this if you wondered what, is it, what this is. We, we just need to fold this in half, make two holes here on the front of the main bag wherever we like and install this also with Chicago screws. So now for the installation of the Chicago screws on the small and the big bag. On the smaller bag we're just gonna again take these leftover tabs here and we're gonna align them with a spot here in the back and then we're just gonna use either a hole punch or one of these to make the holes through the, which we can then mark the holes that need to be made in the bigger bag and we can then just thread the Chicago screw through and finish our installation. Alright guys, 
We're done. <laughs> we have a pretty functional tool bag, I think, here with all the internal tool pockets and smaller pockets and removable outer bag and bit holders and everything. I hope that yours turned out well too and that you enjoy the build. Um, oh, I forgot one thing that I'm gonna do later though, is to make my maker's mark here in front. Make a little leather piece that I'm gonna stick here to the front of the rivets probably uh, with my logo, but yeah, anyways. I hope that you enjoyed this build. If you enjoyed it, please like the video. If you have any questions or something, just comment them below. Also, if you made one, go over to the Facebook group on Olive Sparrow Leather Crafts Makers or something on Facebook. There will be a link below. You can find it there. And yeah, if you want to see more, just subscribe. Maybe even turn on the notifications. And I guess that's it. See you next time. Bye.